Welcome back to Gear of the Week, and we have a lot of stuff to talk about. Christmas just happened, and I got a bunch of stuff in the mail from different companies, and so we're going to talk about some fixed blades and some watch modifications and wallets and knives and much more. So let's go ahead and get started. Now this has been a pretty crazy year, and not only have I gained almost 170,000 subscribers, I have also developed a lot of new relationships with different companies, and one of those companies is Kaiser. Now a lot of people sent in fun Christmas gifts, and I want to say a big thank you. This is just a, a sampling of those things, and all of these come from Kaiser. So we got a hat, we got this really cool bit driver, very similar to the hotel driver, which just uh, has... 10 bits instead of the 12, plus the one in the um, in the front. And uh, they have a custom set of playing cards, which I have to say are quite cool. I don't know if they sell these, but they're just really neat. And I think that's what I'm gonna get to at the end of this. They have this really neat kind of tool and knife roll made of denim. It does look also like it has some soft material on the inside as well. But denim being very tough, this would be good for sharp objects that don't necessarily have a handle, so you would have the ability to keep it from ripping through. I like that. It also comes with a leather patch to identify the Kaiser. So I, I like this. I hope that they start including this as maybe a promotional thing. When you buy a knife, you get one of these as well. That would be a good idea. Some patches, and I really like this. Ultim Dice. This would be another great promotional item. These are really fun things that they could include with their knives when they sell them. And uh, yeah, who doesn't like a set of dice? I just would love if they made a set of five so I could do some Yahtzee with the family. That would be really neat. But overall, thank you very much, Kaiser. This was very nice. I hope that they can start adding some of these, especially these items here, as promotional things that they give as benefits. Maybe they can start a loyalty program where you can kind of get these as you go up in um, purchases, something like that. They could really take advantage of it. And clearly they have a good eye for promotional products. And these are all really nice. It is truly amazing to watch a company grow and develop and become successful, especially when you know the people behind it are just so so great. They're just awesome. And Outdoor Element is one of those companies. I don't know when I started talking to Mike and his, you know, his company, but I've been watching their journey over the last couple of years. And it is amazing to now see things like this little carabiner in places like REI and just success. It's just a really wonderful thing. And I actually get to show you some new products that I know they've had in development for more than a year. And some of these are really, really, really well thought out. So let's talk about it. We have two fixed blades and a folding knife. And their kind of stick is sort of a hybrid survival EDC kind of thing. Like, so you have items like this fire beaner, which has a glass breaker. And check this out, it actually can strike a fire as well. It has the ability to cut seat belts with that little cover. And this is an old style, so they, they have since upgraded it as well. Now they have some fixed blades, and I think this is by far my favorite one on the table, so I'm gonna spend the most amount of time talking about this one. So, a small little fixed blade. Kydex, or this is a more of a injection molded sh uh, sheath, and it has to be because of all of the little attachments. It has a sharpener on the outside, a ferroserum rod attached, kind of screwed in here. And of course we have the knife itself. So it's a small little drop point blade, VG10 steel. And I never, this is my first time holding it. I've only ever seen drawings of it. And this is so insanely comfortable. It doesn't seem like it should be, but this is fantastic. I can't wait to get out and try it. Now, in addition to having great ergonomics, it also has one of the sharpest spines I have ever felt on a knife. Like ridiculous how sharp that, that spine is. And that's awesome. I think the only thing I've ever seen that's close to this is the spine on some of the LT Wright knives when I was at Blade Show. This is on par with that. I, I don't know how I discern the difference, but fantastic because you're going to need it 
for fire steel scraping, but you're also going to use it for bushcraft tasks like uh, t turning bark into powdered form, like a, a very easy to light form. And so having a 90 degree spine is a very valuable thing. Now notice that they did a couple other really nice considerations, a very large sharpening choil, so this will last for a long time. And notice also that it has a hex hole at the back. This is, he just thought of so many things. So it comes with a very loud whistle, I know I tried it, that works as sort of a little lanyard bead and also helps you find the knife if you drop it. So all of that is great. But you can take this hex hole and not only use it for hex bit driver, but it actually allows you to unscrew the uh, ferro serum rod, which is in a hex shape. Now, if you haven't seen this before, this is a huge advantage because when you strike it, you can strike it on a corner, which is going to help a lot in putting a lot of sparks in a very tight area. So this is a fantastic design and it can be unscrewed and replaced so you can buy additional copies of this. And actually there's some, some information on here on where and how to do it. And they also describe how you can actually unscrew it and turn it around if you want to have a longer handle for the ferrous serum rod. They really did a really good job with the design, but I know he's spent his time really developing it, making sure it's correct. And he, he really, it was a good thing he did because man, this is fantastic. Now, the other thing I want to point out is that this is definitely something you need to keep the handles for. The handle works specifically with this sheath. So you have additional retention and it is very good. Very, very good retention. I'm very pleased with that. And look, I love that you can get your full grip and you don't have to move. So I know they don't mean this for more of a, you know, I don't want to say the T word, but you know what I'm talking about. They didn't mean it for that, but it really has a perfect grip. I have one, not more of a question than anything else with this, and that is with the pocket clip. Now this is designed, you can see the little tab right there, kind of, here you go, right there it was gonna keep it from pulling off of whatever it is. Now you can certainly put it on the outside of your pocket and pull it out and it's not gonna come off. I also carried this on my left pocket basically and it perfectly wraps around the edge of the pocket and keeps it, for, it's like a utility clip almost, uh, ulti clip. I, I always, I don't know why I call it that. But it's weird that it's on that side or at least there isn't one here because I would love it to be on my right side and go in my pocket and be an in-pocket carry. I may be misunderstanding it. So Mike can hopefully get back to me on this and help me figure out what's up with this clip. It does sit on the belt really well. And with that little piece of metal you see there that's protruding this way, it does not come off your belt. So it's a very interesting attachment. Notice that it's much smaller than most belts. So it's not really designed to go around the belt so much as it is to lock onto the belt. Very interesting. I like this knife quite a bit. And there's actually two of them here with a slightly different design. So let's go to the other one. And same handle on this, most of the same features, except this is a chisel ground blade with a chisel on the front and uh, still VG10, still 90 degree spine. This thing is very interesting. I don't know where I put this one. This is not Mike's fault. I honestly am not sure the greater advantages of having this style of knife. So maybe you guys can help me figure it out. Why would I want a chisel ground blade with this flat edge? I have a feeling that it's something obvious and I'm completely missing it, but maybe you guys can help me. Now what's neat about this is it actually comes with a diamond plate. Now the screws are recessed because people are going to ask. So you don't have to interact with that diamond plate. So you can sharpen the knife here and it has the ferro serum rod. So it has all those things. It's a little bit different than this design because this is a V edge. So you can pull, do a pull cutter like that with the ceramic. It has the same clip design. And both of these are set up to be really good as neck knives and probably can be carried in other ways as well. I'm probably going to end up carrying this knife quite a bit and I'm gonna be putting it in my pocket with a belt like, um, Quick, I can't remember what you call it. It's like a, a I, I forget what it's called, but it's basically a loop around the belt that hooks. And so when you pull it out of your pocket like this, you then pull this out and then the sheath comes off and falls down. 
So that's basically what I'm going to use this for, and it's going to disappear in my pocket because it's not too long either. They spent a lot of time, I think, on the handle, and it was well worth it because this is surprisingly comfortable for something that is so narrow and small and it just locks into my hand. And surprisingly, would work decently well in lever grip as well. I'm, I'm very excited about this fixed blade. This is definitely going to go in my rotation. And uh, yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. Let me know what you guys think. Now, besides this, there's another product. And this I know he's been, he, I think he's had this in development even longer than the uh, fixed blades itself. And man, it's a good thing he took his time. So this is a hunting knife, right? It's a hunting knife you'll, you'll kind of recognize. It looks very similar to the Havilon Evolve series, but there's an added benefit here. Um, well, actually a couple things. Number one, the way the blades are removed, this is so genius. So you push this down to unlock it, and then you can press this in and take the blade off. And there's no pressure necessary. So you don't have to have a separate tool that prevents you from getting injured because there's no pressure necessary. You don't have to push really hard. And when you switch it around, you can't press the button. You can't deploy or get the blade off. It's basically locked in place. So a scalpel holder for hunting and uh, skinning, and it is a liner lock. And then on the other side, notice this right here, check this out. Just like with the fire beaner, you have a little fire starter to go with it. So you have a little survival tool, potentially life-saving capability of starting a fire. I love it. And it's a G10, so really grippy G10, so you're gonna not gonna be slipping, or slipping around if you have blood on it or anything like that. So I honestly really like this and the handle's surprisingly comfortable as well. So that's another neat design. It comes with a bunch of spare blades and things in here, along with some wax. I'm not sure what that's for. You know, he's thought this stuff through so much and I'm just taking my first look. So we're, we might have a follow-up video talking about these things in the future where I will cover anything that I have missed to this point. Overall though, I'm just so happy to see Mike and his team and his family, who is, it's sort of a family-run business, doing well. And I hope, especially with this knife, that this gets to REI ASAP. This would be a home run. They would sell a billion of them like this is a fantastic little fixed blade, and yeah, I just love it. So well done, Mike. I'm looking forward to seeing a lot more. Now, it may not make logical sense, but I don't really care because I love this watch. And it's funny, I like this watch so much, and yet I hated the metal bracelet version of it. I think that it looks tacky, it gets worn off with the uh, text really quick, and then when you scratch it, it shows black. Anyway. I don't think that one's particularly nice. And so I went ahead and I bought a $200 conversion for this watch. So this is a $20 watch and I bought this kit. So this is from SKX Mod. A friend of me, a friend told me about it and I, I didn't know they actually existed, but I actually got a steel case with sapphire crystal titanium back plate along with a steel bracelet. So I'm pretty excited to do this mod. I'm not gonna go into everything that's in here. We'll do a separate video. But there is an incredibly vibrant watch modding uh, community. And I love this. I'm not really a huge fan of ultra expensive watches. However, the idea of customizing it and making it your own is what I'm all about. So the idea that I take a really good core which is something like the Casio Royale, and then making it, well, super premium, that, that I appreciate and that I like. And it also makes it a little bit more my own. So I'm definitely gonna be showing this in the future, just something cool that you wanna take a look at. Now these are some products I've been crushing on a lot lately. In fact, it has been my primary wallet for the last few months, and I have zero regrets. So the Arc Company Boulder Wallet, whether it's the smaller size, which you see here, as well as the XL, have been fantastic to kind of keep things that I carry with me organized at all times. And I found that it's no more or less than exactly what I need most of the time. Now, it's not the only company I know that makes a wallet organizer. However, the one they make 
is reasonably priced, made in the United States, has a great warranty, and just does exactly what I need and no more and no less. Now, I had blue, right? And I, and I like blue and black. It's great. It goes with a lot of things that I carry with me and that works. But I also have, and I know this is just me being silly, a lot of green and black things. So I like, I'm a big OD green fan. I have a lot of stuff that's in that color combination. And you know what? I said, you know what? I love this wallet so much, it's worth getting another color. So I went with the green and I'm glad I did. Their videos and their pictures don't really do it justice. It's a little bit more of an olive green. In fact, what you're seeing here is definitely brighter than what it looks like in person. So unfortunately, I don't know how to make that perfect for you, but trust me when I say this is pretty darn close to what I have and what I'd like it to match. So you'll be seeing this in the near future. I cannot recommend this company enough. Our company is fantastic. And they even, I wanna say a big thanks to Mark. He sent this along and I, I, didn't, I didn't need it, but I really appreciate it. This is a watch carrier. They, they call it, I believe the Caddy. And it's, it comes with a little uh, tool as well. And uh, you know, it's kind of perfect. It's gonna work really well for a lot of other things that I have planned in the future. So I can take this right here stick this in here let's try it because this is not gonna this is not gonna be quite as good but you get the idea and then this just closes over right and then there you go so it kind of protects the watch it's going to be better for ones that have a metal band because they lay flat but i like this and this is actually going to be a great little pouch for carrying one to two watches on travel so thank you very much for that mark love it and uh, you should take a look. He has tons of different organizers on the website. These are some of my favorites. You can see mine right here. I have the Knipex um, 100 Cobra. I have a small Zebra F301 Compact, the Vero Engineering Mini Fulcrum. This one has the uh, um, clipless design. And then on the inside, I have just a folded flash card. So besides, of course, the cash that I have in this little slot and some extra cards. I highly recommend checking out our company. Enough said. Now, if you like custom gear, but you don't want to spend a lot of money, guess what? There's a perfect place to find all of that. Go over to Gondek EDC and you'll find stuff like this and you can pick whatever fabric you want. So I wanted the Topo Black, so I got everything matching. I got this little organizer. It fits a little um, field notes journal and a pen and a couple other things in the front. I have a $10 uh, Hank, which has microfiber on one side for cleaning glasses and computer screens, etc. So that's really great. And then I have a little Ranger wallet, they call it. And this does not come with the pen or the patch, but is incredibly well-priced for a USA-made product that even has RFID blocking. So this was $30, right? It has little pouches on the inside. It's all made by hand. And everything that Gondek EDC makes is guaranteed for life against manufacturer's defects or any issues that happen because of the construction itself. And that's a surprise, that's a hard thing for someone who is a small company to do is to back up their products in that manner. So I, I really love talking about this company and Max is just a great guy as well as his entire team. So definitely worth checking out. I am going to be showing these as part of an upcoming video where we talk about an EDC goodie bag. If I could give an entire kit to whoever I met what would I include? And one of those things is going to be this Ranger wallet, right? So I have that in there. I'm really excited to show you guys, but you got to check these guys out. Really great prices, really cool ability to customize to any fabric that they have available and even order some if you want something different. I can't say enough. Check out Gondek EDC. You won't be disappointed. Now, if you're not familiar, this is one of the best selling budget knives basically in the world. Very, very popular. This is the Pyrite from CJRB. Now, this is their alt version, they call it, which is more of a sheep's foot design with a cutout. And uh, it is now in Altum handle scales. Now, 
as I will repeat, as I've said in my Ultimum video, this is primarily for looks. It doesn't have any real functional advantage over the G10 that is normally used. And so if you notice that uh, the price is increased because of the Ultim, which is a little bit harder to find, then uh, don't worry about it. You're not really missing out on too much, but it does give me the opportunity to showcase just how much work they have done to reduce the weight. So you can see just how much they've skeletonized the frame and it looks really good with transparent scales. Maybe they can even do Lexan in the future, which would be truly clear. I would love to see that, but overall, a really, really nice looking knife. And this is just a fantastic design. One of the easiest to recommend, in fact, and they tend to be, in the normal varieties, under $50. So if you like the Ultim, it is now available. And if you like the regular version, well, that's also available. These are in AR RPM 9 steel, which is a powder metallurgy steel, something that you don't see usually in that sub $60 price range. And this is one of those really, really nice designs from them with that steel. You can choke up, you have a nice comfortable grip, you can reverse, I mean, this thing has been covered ad nauseum. You can watch a lot of different videos, but it's just a really good offering. And now you can get it in Ultim if you like the, uh, the little yellow look. Let me know, is Ultim for you or do you prefer it like a little bit more generic? Usually when I get a knife, I have a pretty good idea on how I'm gonna feel about it based on statistics and everything else. This is one of those examples where now that I've held it and I've used it, I love it so much more. So this is a very small knife from Vosti. So here's the listing here. And uh, I love, first of all, that it is a budget-friendly knife. So 14C28N uh, blade steel. We have G10 here, Jade G10. So you can dye this any color you want if you really want to change the color. I like that. And even though it's small, I was surprised to find that I could get a decent grip on it. So this actually has three forms of deployment. We have the thumb studs here. So that's pretty easy. Excellent action, by the way on this knife. So great action, thumb studs, no problem. It also has a back flipper. So check this out. You just pull this down and it flips it right there. And it also has a front flipper. I will tell you, it's not the best front flipper that Vosteed has ever done. The traction could be a lot better. The um, um, cutouts need to be a little bit more aggressive, but overall it's, it's not bad. What I think is impressive is for such a small knife, it actually gives me a true four finger grip, even though it has a back flipper. These sort of pseudo invisible back flippers are really nice. And I, I, I really hope that more companies start doing them. They're so much nicer than the ones that come and stick out this way and they get the job done. They really don't need to be more complicated than this. So I really, really like this knife. I have to say, I'm very impressed with this little thing. It is also reversible with a, with a little insert, which is a nice little touch. I got nothing. I got very little, if nothing that bad to say about this. I, I mean, I would love to have a little bit of jimping here, but it's not the end of the world. The jimping here needs to be a little more aggressive, but it still works. I'm able to front flip it and uh, yeah, with very little issue. Overall, very nice job from Vosteed. I'm curious to see, because I, I purposely did not look at the price for this, how well-priced it's going to be when it hits Amazon. So keep an eye out, because I think this is going to be a fantastic little knife that's going to be worth your consideration. These are incredibly illegal knives for no good reason. I will tell you right now, there is no reason why they should be, but it is what it is. Now, they're not illegal to own. They are, however, illegal to carry in some states. Not all, not all states. These are gravity knives and they are made by a company called Daily Carry Co. So a big thank you to them for sending these out. I have the tie slide right here along with the mag slide over here. Now this is a aluminum handle with a M390 blade. So really premium design, nice and narrow, very compact. And man, does that feel awesome. And this one is made of aluminum. So very light, 14C 28N blade steel and a Tanto blade shape. Very comfortable in hand as well. Now these have no practical advantage over other knives from a defensive aspect, okay? They're, they're really, 
they are remnants of an old law that has never been changed. No one has the lobbying capability or cares enough to actually make it change. But simply put, they, there's nothing scary or, or anything like about that, especially with how many other things are available. I mean, heck, even like an Emerson wave opening is gonna be faster to get access to than this. On the other hand, this is one of the most fun things to play with if you like a little, a little, a little danger. And I say that because, especially with the aluminum variation, it's a little bit slippery. And if you had it wet or you had oily hands, I would not recommend doing it quickly, for sure. One thing that I think is really quite cool is if you can see, they actually add, added a magnet right here, which goes through that little hole and actually holds it closed with this, like a small like magnetic detent. So it's not going to come open randomly, which I really like. It's just a simple solution to a problem. Now I've seen other um, blades like this that don't have this capability. Notice it's not opening when I'm holding just the top half, but if I force it, I will. And that's because of the magnet. So really cool design. And actually as far as, you know, um, what is the word? Gravity knives are concerned. These are designed very well. Now the same thing is sort of true here. Once again, we have a magnet that goes all the way through and connects with the blade, which is what keeps it open and closed. And this, very comfortable in hands. And actually I feel a little bit better and more secure because of the texturing that it offers as well. So very neat, great sound. I mean, I mean that's a great sound on this, on this knife and very comfortable in hand. It's a very, very thick, Tanto blade. So it's not going to be a great slicer or anything like that, but for piercing, yeah, no problem. This is going to go through, you know, a car door kind of situation. Like that's the kind of tip you have on this. I'm not saying you should do that. I'm just saying that this is the kind of thick uh, Tanto design that's best for certain aspects, but not great for all that many daily tasks, except being really fun to fidget with. What do you guys think? Should these be a thing? Uh, I love them. I think they're very cool, um, but at the end of the day, they're more novelty than they are practical in almost every instance. But maybe I'm wrong. Let me know down in the comments what you think. And here we are, most of the stuff that we covered today. Now, I think probably my favorite one, the one that I'm most excited to use, is probably going to end up being this little fixed blade from Outdoor Element. They've just done such a good job thinking this through as both an EDC tool and potentially an emergency tool. So really, really nice. In addition to that, we have just so many great products from so many good companies, Gondek EDC, our company, and many more. We have a lot more of these videos coming up to showcase gear as they come. I hope you guys enjoyed. As always, thank you for your time, and we'll talk again soon. And here we go, everything that we covered today in today. And here we are.